I'm just making this video to prove a point. Um, as I was playing Pokemon Brown, it got more and more and more annoying. It was original. It's a Pokemon Red hack. Uh, I haven't played first generation in years, and I wanted to see how much different it was from modern generations. It's still pretty broken, still pretty bad, in different ways. Um, you know, some of the moves are more broken, uh, whilst others aren't, and it's pretty much the same shit, just uh, in a different set of moves and types. So, there's that. And the fact that I always expect uh, the hackers that make Pokemon games to improve them, because really there's nowhere to go but up. Pokemon, uh, well I should say Game Freak, Game Freak Company is everything that you would expect from World War II Japanese propaganda posters. You know, they had the squinty eyes and buck teeth, that's fucking Game Freak. Game Freak is everything that is wrong with Japan. I mean, besides the tentacle rape and, you know, their terrible politics and the bourgeoisie uh, clusterfuck. But, yes, Game Freak is the embodiment of all the negative qualities of Japan. Every rape fantasy, every pedophile bullshit, every weeboo, Game Freak. Because there is nothing as bad as fucking Pokemon, except for maybe Team Fortress 2. So, I've developed this map to illustrate Pokemon in a nutshell. Uh, you see the lines, and you see the ends. Nope. That means where it's a dead end. And the X's are random encounters, and they're fucking everywhere. The O's are uh, gym trainers, not gym trainers, just regular Pokemon trainers, which are fucking everywhere. My point is, you will be battling constantly. I mean, motherfucking constantly. And you mean to tell me, with what's essentially like 30 X's on that map and at least 10 trainers that I maybe go up two levels apparently Japanese people can't do math they're supposed to be so smart but yet they can't figure out a system where you battle some of the time but not to the point where it's infuriating because you know what no one wants to hear the same soundtrack over and over and over and over again as they battle the same couple of monsters over and over and over and over again you know just to level up by one digit it's fucking annoying anyone who likes Pokemon has to be obsessive compulsive there is no other explanation I cannot understand how anyone could find fun every time you take a step hearing and then it fucking goes into the battle segment and it takes a solid five seconds to defeat a useless fucking Pokemon that you're not going to catch, that you're not really going to get anything out of, of any merit, and just continue that over and over again until you get to the next part. It, it would save everybody the trouble if they would just develop a game that was like a turn-based first-person shooter where, you know, you set up the Pokemon's attacks and you pick a type and you battle your friends with it. It could be a fucking app game. And it wouldn't have to be this bullshit. But they do it because it makes money somehow. Because back when we were kids, we were stupid. And, you know, we liked the idea of magical monsters competing against each other at our command. And, you know, they throw fireballs and lightning. And that's pretty cool. But then they completely fuck it up. How do you manage to ruin something like that? Well, you do it with the fucking random encounter tables. You do it with the skewed mechanics that always seems to favor the AI, but never you. But yes, supposedly has a mathematical equation. Like the fucking Pokeballs. Uh, sometimes you can use ten fucking Pokeballs and not capture a Pokemon. This is supposed to be a game about capturing them all. But yet, for some reason, you can't fucking catch one goddamn Pokemon uh, with the Pokeball. That's why you always have to upgrade, and upgrading really doesn't help. Even if you go by the Bulbapedia, the fucking Great Balls or whatever, just go up like a few couple decimals. The only ball that's 
authentically designed to capture them is Master Balls. And those are extremely rare. And then people want to bitch when some of these hacks give you Master Balls. You know, so you can actually catch the fucking Pokemon that you want to. And that way, you actually can train the Pokemon you want to and don't have to have a fucking Sheldar or whatever, you know. Why should I have to use some other Pokemon that I don't like? Why can't I use the fucking Pokemon that I want to? Isn't that the point of the game? It, it, it's just insane. And people are so fucking docile that they'll accept anything. You could package shit and they'd fucking eat it. Because people are like that. And it, it pisses me off. Because you know what? You're paying for the game. You're fucking working your ass off on the game. You should get something that satisfies you. And after... 20 goddamn years, it's still the same freaking game, and they're still making lots of money off of it. And that's wrong. So, that's all I'm trying to say here. I'm not I'm not saying that, you know, the people that like Pokemon, well, they are kind of stupid, but I'm not saying they're irredeemable. They're just stupid in this regard. If you like the Pokemon games, you're fucking stupid. You know? I'm not saying you're stupid for liking the concept of Pokemon. I think the concept is good. I think there should be more games with that concept. But the way it's executed in Pokemon is completely wrong. And Game Freak should be out of business tomorrow. There should not be a Game Freak. There should never be another Pokemon sequel. It's just that simple. The best Pokemon game ever was Pokemon Snap. Which had absolutely nothing to do with anything involving the regular concepts of Pokemon. It was actually about taking pictures of these fantastic creatures in their natural habitats and doing certain techniques so that you could get better po uh, points for your pictures. And it was actually an interesting role playing game of being a photographer and actually being in depth in that fantasy world. That's a good game. That's intelligent. That's taking the idea of Pokemon and doing something really good with it. But most of the shit that's out there is just complete bullcrap. Even like the Pokemon Dungeon Quest games I can tolerate. I don't like them. I don't think they're well designed. But they're tolerable at least. At least those random encounters are a sometimes thing. At least leveling up is a sometimes thing. It acts more like an RPG. You know, the irony of all this is that the random encounter system of JRPGs got their idea from the West. Thanks a lot, Gary Gygax. You fucked us over yet again. And, uh, you know, the random encounter table on Dungeons & Dragons games is what motivated Japanese people to implement it in their RPGs. So, once again, Gary Gygax's terrible miniature idea uh, fucks us in the ass, and we pay for it yet again to this day. And that's just, I want to get that out there, that, you know, just because most of us know Dungeons & Dragons well, does not mean it's a good game. Dungeons & Dragons is like the western version of Pokemon. I mean, just because we all know it, we all grew up with it, does not mean it's good mechanics. And you know what, it actually gets worse with time, because fucking Wizards of the Coast is a fucking terrible corporate shill with no soul and you know would gladly butcher their co consumers and then turn around and tell them to fucking buy another manual sixty dollar fucking manuals but meanwhile they used to ban people from their forum at the drop of a hat when they used to talk about fourth edition I may as well get that out there since this is over ten minutes uh... the fact that when wizards of the coast first released fourth edition or should i say a uh, few months before they did um... they start we would talk about 4th edition and Wizards of the Coast would ban people for it. There is no 4th edition. You're trolling. Me, me, me. So, fine, whatever. There is no 4th edition, even though we fucking knew there was. And then, after a while, it started being, okay, there is a 4th edition, but it's nowhere near completion. That's not till like five or six years away. So, you know, it's, it's still just trolling. Whatever. You know, and then it turned into okay. Fourth edition is very nearby, but if you if people talk about it, it'll somehow indulge on the secrecy of the game because knowing one or two aspects of the fucking game is gonna ruin everything. So 
it, it, that's bullshit. That's worse than what the fucking government tells you. That's worse than the fucking CIA or some shit like that. They don't fucking ban you and bullshit for just talking about things. I am not going to be banned from YouTube for saying that Obama is a bad president or that he has some kind of plan up his sleeve. If that were true, Alex Jones wouldn't be able to say half the shit he does. But whatever, for the sake of argument, uh, I'm not done with this story. So then finally, after they banned like a few hundred people between 3rd edition and 4th edition, Wizards of the Coast finally comes out with 4th edition and then has this big shit grin on their face. <laughs> yeah, we had 4th edition. Aren't you surprised? No. No, we're not surprised. And it sucks, by the way. And then they're like, well, go out and buy it. No. No, cause see, you banned all my friends from the forum, and you treated us like fucking garbage. You ain't getting shit from me. And ever since, I've never bought a D&D manual. I pirated D&D manuals. Oh, I got plenty of fucking pirated D&D manuals in my folder. But I will never, ever buy a Wizards of the Coast product. And if I ever can, I will fucking steal from them. Because I remember vividly how they used to treat us. I remember vividly how there was this social hierarchy of D&D players. How up here were the master races of Medisha and Zurog and bullshit. And down here were the commoner whelps, the serfs, who were supposed to worship these people. Just because they had no lives and had time to go to the fucking conventions and shit. And, and that's another problem with nerds, is the fact that anything with a vagina to them is attractive. You know, for the longest time, I didn't know what Medisha looked like. I assumed she was attractive because of the way everybody else acted. But then I actually saw a picture of her, and she's a fucking dog. I can't believe I went all these years thinking she was at least moderately attractive, and she's fucking a dog-faced Canadian bull dyke, you know? I, I know ner uh, nerd girls that were pretty attractive. Back when Dragon Ball Z was a card game, there was this girl named Kyle Shin 17 and she was pretty hot. Uh, so if anyone remembers DBZ card game and uh, happens to know anyone from those old forums, which was a good forum, by the way. I never once got banned there. Uh, the people were generally nice. It was a good community. The DBZ card game was not that great, but it was a really nice community. So if you know anyone from there, tell Jim Prophet, uh, tell them in, for Jim Prophet, hello, uh, I would love to see you guys again. We should talk. And Kyle Shin 17, you're probably still hot. <laughs> so that's all I got to say about that. And um, I, I guess that's it.